Remember the last time you had a burger? Juicy, beefy, meaty, maybe flame grilled and a little smoky, or maybe it was a turkey or salmon burger. Remember the delicious flavor exploding on your tongue? Can you trust that the meat pad you ate was actually what it purported to be though? During a series of tests done on ground meat items in the winter of 2012, the Food Safety Authority of Ireland or FSAI, discovered the presence of equine DNA in several alleged beef products. In 27 beef burger products tested, just over one-third or 37% were positive for horse DNA, and 85% were positive for pig DNA. Thankfully, in all but one product, the equine presence was at a very low level, about 0.3% horse DNA. However, the frozen beef patty product Everyday Value Beef Burgers, sold at Tesco Markets and manufactured by Silvercrest Foods, a subsidiary of huge multinational food processor ABP Food Group, was found to have 29.1% equine DNA, as well as pork DNA. FSAI informed the Irish Department of Health and the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine of the results of their tests, and they also notified their British counterpart, the United Kingdom's Food Standards Agency. On January 15, 2013, five retailers who sold the horse-tainted beef products, Tesco, Dunn Stores, Aldi, Little, and Iceland, were informed of the test results. These five supermarkets and a few other grocery stores ended up removing 10 million burger products from shelves. On January 16, amid widespread media attention and public outrage, four subsidiaries of ABP were accused of supplying adulterated meat. They were Silvercrest in County Monaghan, Dale Pack in North Yorkshire, Fresh Link in Glass Tesco, ABP Nina in County Tipperary, Ireland, and Dairycrest, Rosington. Supermarket Tesco immediately dropped Silvercrest as a frozen meat supplier but continued to use ABP as a provider of fresh meat. Over the next several days, the scandal continued to grow as the news set off a chain reaction of meat investigations and testing by several groups and governments. Burger King, for whom Silvercrest was a regular supplier, switched beef patty providers just as a precaution. Other major grocery retailers such as Sainsbury's, Asta, and the Co-op also removed some frozen meat products as a precaution, but later the products were found not to contain horse. However, Asda did its own testing and found 5% fresh horse meat in its personal brand beef bolognese sauce. The sauce was supplied by Greencore, an Irish food company. Greencore said it purchased the meat in their sauce from ABP's Nina plant. Both Greencore and ABP ran tests and couldn't find horse meat in the pasta sauce. However, Asda stood by its test results. ABP especially received a lot of criticism from the media and public. They blamed rogue meat suppliers and claimed their company had never knowingly sold horse meat. On February 7th, Findus, a food company, announced that in a sample of 18 beef lasagna products that it tested, 11 items contained between 60% and 100% horse meat. It also found that there was 60-100% to horse meat in ground beef items. They traced the source of the tainted meat back to Comagel, a third-party French frozen ready meal producer. The adulterated products had been made by Comagel's subsidiary Tavola at a factory in Capelle in Luxembourg. On February 14th, the French government suspended the license of French meat processing company A La Tabla de Spanguero, claiming that the company knowingly imported horse meat from Romania, relabeled it, and sold it as beef. Meat had been backtraced from France through Cyprus and the Netherlands to Romanian abattoirs. Over a six-month period, Spangaro had shipped and sold 750 tons of adulterated meat. One of the companies they sold to was Comagel. However, Comagel wasn't blameless either. Investigators felt that due to inconsistencies in the paperwork and the smell and look of the meat when defrosted, Comagel staff should have realized that the meat was not beef. A number of other companies were also found to have a wide range of issues with their products. Nestle found 1% horse DNA in its Butoni beef ravioli and beef tortellini made by German subcontractor HK Schipka and sold in Italy and Spain. One of the largest private catering businesses in the UK, Sodexo, which supplies 2,300 institutions, including schools, prisons, and branches of the armed forces, had to withdraw frozen beef products after finding horse meat in a sample. In an odd twist upon testing, Jaidekoka 30% beef meat pie, which was sold in Iceland, was found to not contain any meat at all. Pertinent to finding horse and beef products was the worry that the horse meat could contain traces of the veterinary drug phenylbutazone, a common painkiller for horses. Even with above-board production of horse meat, there are regulations that horses treated with the drug cannot legally be used for human consumption. 
Further testing of horse-tainted beef samples was done by multiple authorities, and thankfully, the presence of phenylbutazone was not found in the majority of product. For samples where the drug was found, the level of contamination was only 1.9 mg per kilogram, a minuscule amount. That's less than one-eighth of a teaspoon per two pounds. The UK's chief medical officer Sally Davies stated that the level of contamination posed very little risk to human health, adding that you'd have to eat around 500 to 600 100% horse meat burgers to receive the daily human therapeutic dose of phenylbutazone. When all was said and done, over $4 million in meat products had been destroyed. Authorities were not able to determine how many citizens in the EU unwittingly ate horse meat. The public was rightfully outraged, reputations were damaged, and the sale of frozen hamburgers fell by 43%. Sales of frozen ready meats containing beef fell by 13%. Executives at various companies pointed fingers and blamed other companies. As a result of the scandal, various countries in the EU began more rigorous testing of meat products and doing more factory inspections. Countries also increased penalties and punishments for those caught selling adulterated meat. Initially, only a few lower to mid-level people in the meat industry were arrested and charged with fraud in the months after the horse meat scandal broke. However, since then a number of arrests have happened, often in joint international stings involving people knowingly selling mislabeled horse meat or selling horse meat considered unfit for human consumption. Notably, in July of 2017, the Guardia Civil, Spain's national police, in coordination with Europol, the European Police Agency, arrested 65 people involved in an organized ring believed to be selling horse meat unfit for human consumption throughout Europe. The arrested were charged with animal abuse, document forgery, perverting the course of justice, crimes against public health, money laundering, and being part of a criminal organization. The EU continues to struggle with creating legislation and implementation of systems that fully monitor monitor and trace adulterated and contaminated food products. During the horse meat scandal in Europe, some Americans were worried that the horse meat tainted beef was being sold in the US too. The US Department of Agriculture, or USDA, was quick to reassure the public, saying that adulterated beef was unlikely in the US food supply. Because not only do no domestic suppliers slaughter horses, but the agency has strict labeling and inspection standards for imported meat. However, individual species testing for meat imported into the US is typically only performed when there's a reason to question a shipment. Ultimately, the US has done limited research in regard to species testing in meat products. A 2015 study by researchers at Chapman University's food science program did find that in 48 samples of fresh and frozen ground meat products of various animals, 10 of the samples were mislabeled. Of those, 9 products were found to contain more species than the package label indicated. The 10th sample label was completely inaccurate. Traces of horse meat were found in two of the samples. The authors of the study thought that the findings of multiple species suggested the possibility of cross-contamination at the processing facility, that equipment wasn't properly cleaned between the processing of products, so the meat mixed. Also, the study indicates the possibility of lower cost species being intentionally mixed in with higher cost species for economic gain. Unfortunately, since the Chapman study, there hasn't been further testing for various species and meat products in the US. Individual companies and retailers do private testing, but unless a widespread issue occurs, those tests will probably never come to light. Now, if you live in America or in a country that doesn't eat horse meat, you might be a little nauseated by now. We bear no judgment as to whether horses should be eaten or are just for riding. While the idea of eating horse generally grosses out Britons and Americans, once upon a time our countries did eat horse. In fact, during World War II when beef was rationed, many Americans turned to horse meat as a cheap and tasty substitute. Currently, in many other countries such as Iceland, Slovenia, Belgium, Germany, Poland, and China, horse is simply another meat choice. Furthermore, horse is actually considered a delicacy in Japan, where it can be served as sashimi. But all this is besides the point. What the scandal and various studies have revealed is that multinational firms are controlling huge parts of the consumer food chain. Shady decisions made by contractors of contractors, sometimes in different countries, affect what's on your plate. Food fraud is on the rise. A 2014 report estimated that food fraud costs the global food industry 30 to 40 billion dollars US every year. As well as adulterated products, food fraud is also mislabeling products and even obscuring where products come from. Can you as a consumer trust what your food packaging says? In general, misleading or mislabeling packaging seems to be a much bigger problem than potential adulterated mystery meat in America. But why does it matter if your burger which was labeled product of the USA came from Texas or Latin America? 
a variety of reasons. For example, some consumers have made a decision to only purchase beef that was raised in a place where the rainforest wasn't destroyed to create pasture land for cattle. For others, minimizing the carbon footprint of their food supply chain is important and they'd rather eat meat that was shipped from only a few states away as opposed to flown in from thousands of miles away. Others want their meat slaughtered in a certain way for ethical or religious reasons. Also, there's the simple but very important notion that consumers should be able to make purchasing decisions based on accurate labeling. Current gaps in American law allow cattle and pigs to be slaughtered overseas and imported to the US where they're cut up. Since they're processed in the US, this allows companies to slap a product of the USA sticker on them. How is that possible, you're asking? In 2015, the US Congress voted to repeal laws that allowed the USDA to enforce country of origin labeling or cool requirements for beef and pork products. The World Trade Organization WTO, had ruled that Canada and Mexico could begin imposing more than $1 billion on tariffs of the US products in retaliation for having to label meat products as produced in their countries. They felt that some shoppers would eschew products labeled as having been imported from Canada or Mexico. Worried about tariff issues, Congress repealed cool and companies have been using the repeal to their advantage ever since. However, in July of 2019, the current Congress showed some interest in reinstating cool. Beef is not the only protein that's mislabeled in the US. Seafood is frequently substituted and mislabeled. In March of 2019, a marine conservation nonprofit, Oceana, released a new report on the state of seafood fraud in the US. They found that 20% of the 449 fish for sale they tested were incorrectly labeled. To highlight how widespread the issue was, the fish samples were purchased from different retailers in 24 different states and the District of Columbia. Among other findings, the report discussed that the most commonly mislabeled fish were sea bass and snapper. Mislabeling often occurs in the case of cheaper, less desirable imported fish which are sold as local catch and when farm-raised fish were marketed as wild-caught. A previous Oceana report found that 59% of tuna sold in the grocery stores and restaurants is not actual tuna, and 87% of snapper isn't snapper. In August of 2019, Philip R. Carawan, the former owner of supplier Captain Neal's Seafood, pled guilty to having his company falsely label and sell over 179,872 pounds of foreign crab meat from South America and Asia as product of the USA, making over $4 million in the process. It isn't only meats that are targets of food fraud. According to the US Pharmacopoeial Convention, a nonprofit which helps create standards for drugs, dietary supplements, and food ingredients, the top three adulterated or mislabeled foods are milk, olive oil, and honey. These are often cut with starches, less expensive oils, and corn syrup, respectively. Frankly, the issues we've been discussing are just the tip of the iceberg. By now, you might be thinking that you should raise and slaughter your own beef, catch your own seafood, keep bees, and plant olive trees. For many people, that lifestyle simply isn't possible. So what can you do to ensure that what you're eating is actually what you think you're eating? Educate yourself. Some industries have created committees or task forces committed to ensuring the quality and safety of their products. They sometimes put out reports, testing items, and touting top quality products for the industry. The olive oil industry has actually created seals that reputable companies can include on their labels, a sign that the product is of good quality. If possible, purchase local. Get to know the sellers at your local farmer's market or co-op. You're less likely to purchase mislabeled imported food there. Also, you can hold your elected officials responsible. Don't be afraid to send an email or a letter to authorities detailing your concerns. Often, the USDA has a comment period where they actively seek public feedback when considering new regulations. Ultimately, you can also vote with your wallet. When possible, don't support companies or retailers who have been revealed to be involved in mislabeling, promoting, or selling fraudulent products. How safe do you think the food supply chain is in your country? Let us know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video, What Would Happen If You Only Ate Meat and Nothing Else? Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.